are going to dive right into my 55 gallon 208 liter worm compost bin blue. Blue is very big, obviously, thus the 55 gallon part. However, he's running out of room. We are going to need to do some harvesting here and we need to move that wedge over so that we can have room for the worms to go the full length of the bin again. One of the reasons why blue is getting so full is because I have been taking the castings off of my other bins and laying it on top of blue and thus, you know, blue gets full even though it wasn't his castings to begin with. So the 20 pounds, 9.1 kilograms of worms are going to need more real estate. So I am going to do some harvesting today and then we are going to move the wedge over this way and then we are going to expand the feeding end. So I will bring you along with me. All right, so another thing that I have been doing is I have reinstated the leftovers bin. And what the leftovers bin is that I don't take these overs on, on the screen and put them at the feeding end. I put them in an entirely different bin. And what I've been doing, probably for the last couple of months now, is I've been using the cat litter, you know, the ubiquitous yellow cat litter buckets, and putting the overs, some bedding, some worm chow, and getting them really wet. And then I am going to leave them for about four to six months before I check on them. That will give the any cocoons that are in here a chance to hatch. It'll also give the worms you know, some you know, new real estate and much less competition because as you can see here, I don't really have more than one or two worms that are on top. They've all dug deep or got over to the feeding end. So they're gonna have much less competition and the increased moisture should help this super long-term food uh, get finished up and I don't have to take up room in my bins with leftovers. These are my leftover bins right now. So anytime I'm sifting, the overs go into these buckets. So let me show you up close what's going on. Okay, and this is one of the leftover bins that I'm going to keep uh, going. And I didn't put any extra worms in here or anything. This is just whatever worms were in the overs on the screen and whatever cocoons hatch out of uh, the items that were in the screen and I did put some paper bedding in here and I am kind of Going through here every once in a while and make sure that the moisture is appropriate for the worms um, For the most part though the lid is kind of you can see it's partially open and uh, I'm gonna leave them alone for about four months before I even really do anything other than check the moisture I do tend to waver back and forth between whether or not I just put them back in at the beginning or if I have a, a bin for leftovers. I will show you here in a second the bin that has been doing the leftovers for the last six months. I just uh, got in there and started drying it out and they have done a really marvelous job all by myself with nobody peeking on them, nobody filming them, and they have done great. This is the leftovers bin, and it's been going for about six months now. And this was overs from the screening, and then I put some bedding in here, just paper bedding, and some worm chow, and I've let them do what they're going to do. I put a lid on here loosely, and they've been going at it for about six months. And there is still wood mulch and, and stuff in here, but I'm going to put this out to dry and harvest this, and then I will show you at some point later how much of this was recovered after leaving the worms to their own devices for about six months. If you have any questions about the bin or worm farming in general, feel free to put those down in the comments below. I do try to answer all of them, and believe it or not, whether it's a question or a comment, I learn as much as, as anybody, and I really do appreciate all of your comments. So I'm going to do just a little bit more here because it's kind of looking like this might be too wet. And I will show you what I have harvested this week. Yeah, I'm not trying to put these into little balls. If you sift things that are too wet, they just turn into little pea-sized balls. So this part does need to dry out a little bit more, but I am going to show you what I've harvested this week just from blue. So this is a five-gallon, 20... 
no, 20 liter, 19 liter container. And that's what I've, it's almost full up to the, the mark here where it's five gallons. So that's what I've harvested out of blue just this week. And uh, this is how I store my castings. I do put a lid on them loosely, you know, not much, but I do go in and peek and make sure they're not drying out too much. And sometimes I will sprinkle some water in there to keep the biology going and also make sure that the, uh, the castings are still good in case the cocoons are hatching. So let's get that out of the way and let's get moving that wedge. All right, guys, if you're liking the video so far, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right. Well, hopefully the five gallons that I have taken out is going to help us get a lot of re real estate here. Because blue really does need to progress. And I think I've been stalling his progress because I have... Uh, been putting all those other bins on top of them. So I've got a little marker right here on the plastic on the side of the bin here to show me where the the finished part of the wedge is so that I just move over the finished part and stack that up and try not to disturb the in progress because from this line over underneath this tarp here is the in progress and also the feeding zone so we don't want to disturb that because that would screw up the wedge we want to make sure that the items that are on the far end of the bin are finished and very much almost free of worms as i'm going through here you can see there's really not very many worms here at all and that's because everything that's edible is pretty much done all right, so we've stacked that over there. I'm gonna take off these tarps here and we will start moving the in-progress portion over. So I'm going to take my piece of tape and I'm going to move it over here so that I know where my finished part is now. It looks like we have an avocado doing its thing here, but right here centered around the seam is where the sort of in-progress foods are. You, you can see the concentration of worms here is very noticeable. I don't really see any food. To me, this looks exactly the same as the stuff we just moved over, but the worms seem to think differently about it. So we are going to gently move this over and I'm just gonna pick everything big and throw it to the far end deal with that later and this looks like we're going to I mean it looks like they've, they've done pretty much a great job on this there's really nothing that I can see that needs to still be done the worms are still working the moisture is a very good moisture for the worms not a good moisture for me wanting to sift of course but that's two different moistures I mean you take this moisture here and then you take this moisture here. This is almost good for sifting. This is not good for sifting. Don't even try it. You will mess up your screen and your castings will get put into nice little pea-sized balls that harden as, you know, almost get as hard as a rock. So you don't want to do that. If you, if you are a person that likes to sift, you should definitely wait until it is dry enough to do so. But good, we're making really good progress here. And I'm going to consider this to be, you know, obviously the part we're not going to feed anymore. And I have got an idea to keep the, the feeding part and the not feeding part a little better uh, separated. And I'm taking a page out of AV's book here. And I, I just have a, a box that my fan came in. It's a little bit plasticized. I don't know if that's wax on there or what, but the intent is for it to stay and, and hold up this end of the, the wedge while I put everything in here. So I'm, I'm not done moving things yet, but that is the, the plan is to put that cardboard in there and keep the sides separated a little better because sometimes when I come back in here I'm not entirely sure 
which part, you know, where did I stop? So I think this right here is, is good. We'll stop at the seam and we'll put the cardboard here on the seam and then we will call this the uh, resting phase, or I guess these guys are foraging, <laughs> if we're gonna use the same terms. So I'm gonna put this here and I've, I've poked a lot of big holes in here and, and they can get around it and under it and over it if they want to. It's not a barrier really for the worm so much it is for me to let me know where I'm stopping and starting. All right, let me move the camera and we'll get to the business end of the bin. All right, here we are on the end that was fed most often, or more recently. We've got our avocados and our mangoes on top. Um, this is some maybe worm chow that I put in here. Let's see, I think I put pineapple in here and oh, I'm kind of disappointed. I thought maybe the worms would grow me a pineapple. All right, well, can't win them all. I've got a virtual forest of uh, avocado trees. I suppose I shouldn't ask the worms to do any more. Just kind of breaking up the feeding zone from last time and seeing we, we can look at the, if the pineapple, if there's anything left. <laughs> they have totally eaten the whole thing. They're like, mom, no plant for you. We are going to eat the pineapple. So <laughs> good worms. So that looks like, maybe there's a worm ball under here. But they are all the way through that pineapple. I don't know what the, you know, how much end do you need for the pineapple to grow you a new pineapple. If you do know, put that in the comments below. If you've turned something that you bought at the grocery store into a, a pineapple plant, let me know. What was, I, what was I supposed to do if we wanted the worms to be successful in growing a pineapple plant? Okay, Ooh, that's nice. We're getting a good showing. Turn this over. So I'm seeing some of the, the larger items, avocado shell there. So that's good. I'm not smelling the garlic like I was last time. Whatever it was that uh, the garlic was hanging on to, the worms must have got at it. All right, so there is a ton, a ton of worms in here. You can see what I mean when I say that they need to get some more real estate because they're getting a little bit cramped, only having half of the bin where they can uh, roam about. All right, so we're going to put this up to the edge here and keep digging. Seems like I, I still have some, some sort of mycelium going on in here. I'm not really sure what it is. But we'll, we'll bury that with the food and the worms will figure it out either way. So really good concentration of worms here. Yep. Basically the whole bin is a worm ball at this point. So even though these are long-term foods, I'm not going to mess with them right now. They're going to just keep getting kicked to the end of the bin for right now. It's, it's the leftovers that are down there where I'm sifting. That's the stuff that is going to end up in the overwintering bin. So I think these are the garlic, the little garlic heads. And they don't smell like anything. They're just like wrappers now. There you go. So no garlic smell anymore, but I think all of the population is right here waiting for me to get them a new home for them to completely take over. So I've made a lot of room there. So let's get them some bedding and some food. Okay, so that was about four gallons of my prepared bedding. Put that down there. I'm going to do a couple other handfuls because that stuff didn't have any coconut coir in it. I just made it upstairs. Sometimes there's just not enough time in the day, you know what I mean? Okay, this is today's feeding. So it is going to be 
three bananas and then a bunch of tomato skin and rinds and stuff like that. Kind of spread that out. Make sure all of the the food is is over here and let's get them some more bedding. Okay, so that is another almost 5 gallons of bedding that I'm putting on top of the food here. And I think I still want to cover this up. Okay. That still had enough uh, food in there that, you know, I'm a little afraid that flies or whatever might might be interested in it. And now that we know where that is, I can backfill the, the the divider here so that it stands up a little bit better and maybe I can get a little better surface area to get that moving. Since I forgot my grit, and this is basically a brand new part of the bin, I'm going to give them some... Uh, I'm going to give them some worm chow and I'll put on there what it is that it's made out of but it's mostly oats and flour and I do work mine in because I have had problems in the past with it kind of cementing on the top and then uh, just kind of sits there doesn't really get eaten so I'm sure that's a, a factor of moisture or what have you. After you get done watching this, you can either watch Blue from the beginning in the playlist, which I will link below, or you can watch what YouTube thinks you're going to want to watch, and that is going to be posted right there. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good